I'm back. <laughs> I'm back at Adam's Antiques and today I'm going to finish it. Today I'm finally going to finish it. We've got an hour and a half and we're gonna get through the rest of the mall. So let's head in and see what we can find that we can buy and flip for a profit. Here we go. I decided to start here in the back of this antique mall because we only made it through about half of it the last time. But the first thing I spotted was this amazing bowl hiding in this cabinet here. And of course, I had to reach in and pull it out. Um, it was accompanied by this pitcher by Costa Boda and this one-legged parrot. Poor parrot. Uh, but I pulled out the bowl and I expected it to be signed because it was just an amazing piece of glass. And a lot of the times they are signed. However, this piece, I could not find a signature on it, which was very surprising. I thought for sure someone would put their name to this because it looks like a galaxy. It was just phenomenal. Um, there was a little pamphlet with it, Two Glass Objects by Bertil Valian. And I'm not sure if that's who made this bowl or not. Um, a lot of the other examples I found were signed. Uh, so it's just a real curious piece, but it was absolutely gorgeous and I had to I had to buy it so this entire booth was primarily dolls and doll clothing and doll accessories which I know a lot of my viewers are really into dolls and so I decided to just give you a peek through here um, and show you what they had to offer um, they do have an antique mall plum pudding antiques so I'm just giving you a peek at that here I've noticed this pair of vases. They are a satin milk glass vase with beautiful birds on them. The birds are, they, well, they don't appear to be hand painted. I believe that they are a transfer, but they were $50 each. And I'm just not sure that I can do that. Um, this was also very nice. We've got some teacups in there. I liked the seagull on that teacup and saucer. This was just beautiful. It was a beautiful plaque, um, but it was mounted on this giant frame. I think they had $195 on that. Some beautiful antiques in this booth. A little outside my price range so far. <laughs> then I spotted this gorgeous, gorgeous piece, and I thought, I have to see that. I have to get to it. And then I had to somehow figure out how to open this cabinet because it was it was very tricky there was a key but there wasn't a key and so you had to turn the key and then there was a latch but no there are two latches you have to get the other latch too yes I figured out the door <laughs> and I finally got to this beautiful piece and how much was it it was five hundred dollars so that was kind of disappointing but it was Royal Dalton which was really exciting the last piece of Royal Dalton we sold, I believe, sold for about $500. You can see the marking there on the bottom. It's marked Dalton Burslem, and it's just a stunning piece. I loved the, the ornate handle on that. This was also Dalton. Those are the pieces I want to find at the thrift store for $5. In this corner cabinet, I noticed this bottle here for $25. I'm not sure if this is a vanity bottle or if it's a perfume bottle, but it was only $25 and it was a beautiful piece of Murano glass. You can see it is marked there on the bottom with a sticker made in Italy. And the craftsmanship was just really nice on it. It was very thin, almost like paper. Um, and so I decided to grab that. There was another bottle that I wanted to take a look at. Uh, the bottom was smooth, but it was $40. Some really nice pieces of glass in there. Now this was really neat and I was walking down this aisle and I paused because it just occurred to me that this entire wall, the entire wall was all Wallace nutting pieces. Um, I've bought and sold a few Wallace nutting pieces in the past, uh, but I've never seen this many in one place. And so I decided just to give you guys a peek at this um, because it was quite the collection and a huge variety of different scenes and images. This booth here, I noticed this piece of hull I thought it was pretty. I always like this pattern. I don't know why. I just, there's something about it I like. 
There were some really neat pink mid-century lamps there, and this lamp was really fun. It was 125 mid-century modern style with circles. It was a polka dot lamp. It was pretty cool. Looked neat in a retro living room. Um, this art glass piece was curious. It was very textured, kind of a reminding me of a gourd, a giant green gourd. Got a little nappy dish here. It is marked on the bottom. You can see it's Japan. I liked that it looked like cherry blossoms. Now in this cabinet, I spotted the art glass. Of course I did. Um, unfortunately, it was $46 and it had a broken beak. Um, you just can't come back from a broken beak. Oh, it was $48, $48. Now here on this end shelf, there was a percentage off and I can't remember what exactly the percentage was, but I noticed this for $15. I loved the gold flakes. I thought, you know what? That's really nice. That cranberry glass with those gold flakes and it was nicely made. It was hand blown. I set it back, but then I was like, you know what? $15. There's a percent off. I wish I remembered what the percent off was, but that was my ultimate buying decision. You could see the bottom is polished, clear. It's very nice, and I decided to grab it. This was another piece that was there on the end cap. They had it for $12. Um, this one also had some of the gold adventuring in it. I wasn't sure if this piece would have had a lid because it flares out, but in any case, for $12, I also decided to grab this because of that gold adventuring. And then I spotted the pair <laughs> and the birds. Um, the birds here, you guys know I'm really into the bird trees. And uh, these birds were little birds on hooks. And I thought, you know what, 35 for the pair? Maybe I can do that. You know, I would do 35 for the pair. But then I realized that it was $35 each. So it was not 35 for the pair because there was the sticker for the other set. So I could not do $35 each or $35 for one even. Um, now back down to the pair. This pair right here was $15. Um, I didn't realize at the time, but I, th I believe this is Alfredo Barbini and uh, it is Murano. We have it listed. I don't think we listed it as Murano, um, but I'm, I'm pretty certain it's Alfredo Barbini. Now, as I was walking by this booth, of course, I spotted the Pyrex, and I know everyone's always asking why I pass up the Pyrex. The reason I pass up the Pyrex is because it's usually priced at a point where I can't buy it and flip it for resale. You can see this one's priced at $249, and that's really not, that's not a price that I can buy and flip for resale. Usually, it's pretty easy for sellers to look it up and get an idea for what to, what to charge for it, um, and they're usually pretty right on the money when it's in antique malls and thrift shops. I really liked this paperweight. I thought it looked kind of like an eyeball. There were no signatures on the bottom. I actually consulted some of my friends who are really good with glass. And I was told that this piece particularly, um, a lot of the times will be uh, marked with fake signatures on the bottom because it was not originally signed. But it is made in Murano and um, it's, it's a beautiful piece. Looks like an eyeball though, if you ask me. <laughs> So back here, I've decided to jump on in and I spotted something immediately and I just like geeked out 25% off, spotted those cats and I just about like fell over because in my head, I'm telling myself, those are Lisa Larson. Oh my God. And I don't know how I got Eldrith and Lisa Larson like lines crossed in my head. Um, but they're Eldrith cats. They're not Lisa Larson. They wanted $75 a piece and I can't do 75 and still expect to flip them for a profit. So I had to pass on the Eldrith cats, but they were very cute kitties and I have found them before and I have been able to flip them, but I just can't do it at 75. So I ventured into this booth, which was very crowded, and I love the crowded booths. Um, you can see there is an art glass bird here. I'm checking out his feet. He's $30. He's got really big feet. That is like a huge, big-footed bird. Um, $30, he's kind of looking up at me, and I'm like, you know, yeah, okay. There was a percentage off of this booth as well, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember what it was. 
I need to keep better track of these things when I'm filming for you guys, but um, inevitably I decided to buy the bird. This bowl was also curious. It had a very interesting growth on the side of it, and so I checked the bottom to see if there was any signatures, and I didn't see any signatures there. The vase. The vase was nice. I had to get a bit closer look at that vase. Um, I loved that it had that silver in it, that uh, Argento, and so I had to pull it out and get a closer look at the bottom. I expected a signature there somewhere, but I just didn't see one, and so inevitably it goes back. And then up here, I had that was that was a cool looking lamp. And this dog was just massive, and you don't get to see the dog. You just see his legs. That was a little creepy. <laughs> now these little bowls had this frit texture on the outside, and I have come across those in the past. But an ashtray piggy... This fish, however, the fish I did not leave behind because I was like, you know what? That looks like an interesting fish. Um, the fish was $30. The bottom looked like it had some age to it. It was heavy. It seemed like a good quality. I loved the matte glaze on it. I'm not sure who makes this, but there was just something about it that I thought, you know what? I, I feel like this is something good. So if you know who makes it, let me know in the comments um, because I haven't been able to identify it yet. There was some art glass hiding there in the back, but I spotted it. <laughs> now, in this glass case, I noticed the whale. It was the whale, and I was curious about the whale. Um, it kind of reminded me of Formia, and it was marked $43. When I turned it over, it did have, I believe, a crystal clear sticker on the bottom. It was not Marana, but he had a really fun expression, and he was interesting. So he deserved a closer look, and then he failed me. This booth looked like all sorts of fun, and I was like, ooh, this is my type of booth. <laughs> there was an entire shelf full of glass here. Um, the apple in the back caught my attention first because it was just big and blue and so I decided I needed a closer look at that when I got it out it just really didn't have the quality that I was hoping for you see the bottom there is just I don't know there's the bubbles and it wasn't there for me this I liked and I liked this um this was just a really big fat gold fish I mean, I don't really know how else to describe it, but on the bottom, I peeled back the sticker a little bit to see what, what was underneath because I saw the remnants of another sticker that had, had kind of a scalloped edge. And to me, that appeared to be a Murano sticker that I have seen in the past with that scalloped edge and it had the quality. The quality was good. So I purchased the fish. And the little box. We've bought and sold this Portugal pottery in the past, and so I recognized it, and for only $12, uh, we've done pretty well with the Portuguese pottery in the past, and this was a trinket box, which we do well with trinket boxes, so it was just the perfect storm. We've got some paperweights, and these are reverse painted paperweights. I did pick it up, check it out. You can see the hole there in the bottom where they use the paintbrush to paint the inside of it. It had a phoenix on it and a dragon, which I thought was a neat um, motif. And I actually was considering it. I don't know why. I, I inevitably looked up comps on these reverse painted paperweights. I know we had sold one recently, and unfortunately, at that price point, I just couldn't do it. So I passed on that. There were some little bobblehead dolls there. I thought they were adorable. Look at their little bobbleheads. <laughs> and there were lots of stone critters. Um, and this, of course, was a pottery critter. And I wasn't really sure what kind of animal this was. I was having a moment. They said it was a ceramic bird. $23. And I'm thinking, is that a bird? Has the day been that long that I'm having a moment? 
But I checked through all of the figurines to see if there were any um, Native American fetishes, and I didn't see any in there. There were some pine cone owls, though. Now, this set was so cool because it was like birds, and I like birds. Um, but not only that, I believe it's a sugar, a creamer, a salt, and a pepper. Um, or possibly one of them could be a syrup. I believe um, that's a possibility as well. But they were made in Germany, and they were really neat. They were $50, but there was a percent off of this booth as well. I believe this one was 25% off. And... Um, they were just really fun. They were neat. They were, I mean, if I were to put those on the table, the kids would have loved them, but I don't need more things. I need to get rid of things. Also, those bears were ceramic arts company. There was a face staring up at me, and it is Mexican folk art pottery. I'd never seen the face before, so it was curious. It was a bank. You can see there it is marked on the bottom, Mexico. I believe the price was $30, right? Yes, $30. It was 25% off. I probably, I don't know. Um, these typically sell for, um, I want to say like $40 to $65, unless they're really big. The really big ones I've seen sell pretty well. And so I definitely considered it, but inevitably ended up setting it back down. <laughs> this, this was an interesting little bisque figurine, but... It was the candle that I was interested in. Um, so this candle had two little birdies there. I didn't realize it was a candle. I thought it was just a little trinket box. But you can see there, there was a candle on the inside. And this, we've got another pair. It's just the day of pairs. I feel like we're buying lots of pairs. Um, it, it actually has a Murano sticker there on the bottom. And look at the Submerso in that. It's green. It's red. It's clear. It's all of the everything together. It's, it was just a really interesting looking pair. And here I spotted these oyster dishes. I believe they're like oyster shooters or something like that. I have purchased these before. I've actually bought Limoges versions of these and they sold for a lot of money. A lot of money. Um, the Limoges versions. These I suspect are Japanese. Um, but for $16... I was like, yes, I will take those. Um, you can see the shell painted on the outside of those. Um, but yes, absolutely. I buy those every time I find them. Now, I've made my way to the cases. Now, I used to always be scared off by the cases, thinking everything's outside my price range. Um, but there are still deals to be found here. I mean, maybe not these, but there there are things that you can find to flip for resale there are discounts um and so I try not to discount cases anymore I try to like at least look and check and see um, because sometimes people just rent a case instead of a booth and so um, I decided to check it out now in this booth right here I noticed a few things that I liked first of all we've got the Herb Thomas art glass. We recently purchased a piece of Herb Thomas art glass we've actually got it listed right now I love it I really love it and I considered buying some more, but I thought, you know what, I'll just get rid of the piece we have right now and uh, maybe come back and, and buy some more, but um, beautiful. We've also got the Starfish by Luke Adams. We saw one of those recently and this, this is an Alessandro Moretti vase. Alessandro Moretti actually was trained by the artisans of Murano and then he moved to West Virginia. United States um, and he did some work under pilgrim glass but I just thought that that vase was amazing it was amazing it was it's like the eye of Sauron isn't that what it is it's called the eye of of Sauron isn't I'm, I'm trying to reference movies and I don't even hardly watch tv um we've got a pair here for ten dollars uh, why not another pair <laughs> there was a discount on this booth I should mention there is a discount here as well um, we've got 35 on the Blanco. I've got a few of those. And this is a snowflake candlestick holder. I really liked that piece. Lots of art glass in this particular case. And I came back, I ended up buying the Alessandro Moretti vase, and I bought the pear. I checked out the fish, but unfortunately there was damage on it. Um, it was only $10, but it was damaged. 
this, I bought this. <laughs> this was absolutely beautiful. It was $48. Again, discount, but I can't remember. I'm sorry. Um, it was blue opaline. We've got this West German vase. I have one similar um, in my house, in my sunroom. There were some really nice pieces in this in this case, including these German bullseye bud vases. These were super cool. I love the contrast of the green and the red. I ended up buying both of those. We've got this beautiful mid-century vase back there. That one was a little spendy. These, these were amazing. You saw the price. It was $1,600 and I was like, Andrew, can I, should I, can I? He's like, no, don't do it. <laughs> he talked me down from the edge, but it does say 1600. Okay. In my defense, they are 60% off. So that's a lot off, right? Maybe. Okay. I didn't do it, but they were just really cool. This also is um, Avem Murano. I've seen it in red and I never seen it in that emerald green. It was 30% off. And I thought, you know what? That tutti frutti Avem. Oh my goodness. Oh, and the lime peel. The lime peel. I bought another piece of lime peel. So exciting. And that was it. All right. Well, our total spend there today was. $610. I feel like once we got into the cases, we started spending some more money and there was actually a set of glasses in there that were $1,600. I don't know if I showed them on video, um, but they were 60% off and I texted Andrew. He's like, we already have two of those. Sell the two we have. And I didn't even know we had two of them. I guess he got them on Sunday. So once I sell those two, I'm going to get the rest of them and I'm going to sell <laughs> Oh gosh, you know those those sales they get they get they're psychological they get in your head and they're like you could have percentage off you can have percentage off but I feel pretty safe with everything I got I, I'm confident I can double my money on it um, but occasionally you win some you lose some that one bowl that I picked up that's the one piece that it was kind of my wild card today not really sure about that piece I checked it all over there were no signatures which was really surprising to me because it was such good quality you could just feel it so it was very strange to me that there were no signatures on it so um, I was kind of an odd piece but I felt I felt a little unsure about it so I cost averaged it out we'll be all right and um, I guess on that note I'll stop rambling I will see all of you tomorrow later Welcome to the official eBay store of the Crazy Lamp Lady, where we specialize in selling vintage and antique collectibles. We list 20 to 30 new items in our eBay shop every single day, and we start them at just $4. Follow us here on eBay and thank you for stopping by.